Well, I'm going to talk about um, a problem uh, which is well known to all of you, I think. Um, the noise uh, we can experience during a good meal in a restaurant. Um, we had a very good example yesterday. Good food, but very noisy environment. Very difficult to have a good uh, conversation. Um, and um, well, for some time I have been looking into this problem and uh, trying to find a way uh, to model that. Um, first of all, to to calculate the actual noise level we will achieve. Uh, but at the end, I will also talk about um, how to oralize this situation. <clears throat> So first, something about um, how we talk in a noisy environment. Um, then I will go through the method and uh, have some test cases. Um, and uh, if time permits, we can uh, play a little with the oralization cases. Um, well, the method is not entirely new. It was presented 2012 uh, at Internoise in, in New York. Um, but, well, it, it might be interesting also to to go through it uh, in this um, connection. We um, know that uh, um, it, it can be a problem, uh, and we uh, may also be aware of the so-called Lombard effect, um, which has been known for about a hundred years. Um, first. Um, explained and, and demonstrated by, by Lombard, um, namely uh, the effect uh, that we um, automatically raise uh, our voice if we have uh, a noisy environment. Um, and uh, this is something well, which is in, uh, in uh, our nature and uh, actually it has been shown to, uh, to be uh, true also in, in uh, many uh, other mammals and the birds uh, has the same Lombard effect. <laughs> anyway, um, to uh, give an example and actually also pr present the data uh, I would suggest as input data for, uh, for the sound source, um, I refer to the ANSI 3.5 standard uh, which gives octaband um, sound levels for speech at uh, four different um, levels of uh, vocal effort, normal, raised, loud, and shouted. And um, here I have converted these data into uh, sound power levels in octobands. Um, in the, the original standard you will find the sound pressure level in a distance of one meter in front of the mouse, which can be good for some purposes, but for room acoustic uh, purposes, we need the sound power of the source. Um, the DBA levels are here to the right. Um, the two lower octave bands are not included in the ANSI data. Uh, I have uh, well extended <laughs> um, the data from uh, experience from, from a lot of uh, measurements we did. Um, but you can see the general uh, tendency is that the higher um, level we speak uh, speak with, uh, the more uh, um, we raise the f high frequency contents uh, of the of the voice. So the spectra are uh, clearly changing um, simultaneously. The model could be explained like a kind of feedback model. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people uh, dining, uh, talking. They are the sources, and we have the vocal effort. Um, they uh, the, the speech level. We have some attenuation or amplification from the room, as you like. And uh, that means uh, we are also uh, a group of receivers um, experience this ambient noise level, um, which means that uh, due to the Lombard effect, we may uh, change the way which we talk. Um, so, and then the, the interesting thing is that the sources and receivers are the same people. <laughs> Well, the Lombard effect um, can be expressed mathematically, it's quite simple. It starts from an uh, uh, ambient noise level around 45 decibel, um, and at that level we will have an average speech level, uh, well, in the distance of one meter in front of the mouse, of about 55 decibel. But above this noise level, 
uh, the speech level will increase. Um, and um, well, we can put it simply in this equation um, where we see is the Lombard slope. And uh, it has been studied and discussed uh, by many people. However, since 1962, there has been uh, several very good research projects uh, showing the same conclusion that Lombard effect should be uh, half a dB per dB. <clears throat> Then, in uh, 2010, I had a paper in Applied Acoustics where I uh, presented a very simple um, prediction model assuming a 3D diffuse sound field. Uh, and it turned out that this uh, feedback problem is, is not very complicated. It's just a number of equations you can easily solve. And uh, this is the result. The ambient noise level can be calculated from this, um, where we have only these uh, parameters, the absorption area in the room, uh, the number of people present, and the group size, which gives us the actual number of people uh, speaking simultaneously. So group size typically is around three to four, uh, means on average, uh, every three or four people are talking uh, at the same time. The absorption area, well, in this simple theory, we apply the Sabine equation, so it's a function of the volume, preparation time, and we could also add a uh, small amount of absorption from the clothing of the people. That's fine as long as we have something which is approximated by a diffuse sound field, and as long as we know the volume. But both can be, well, be difficult in, in a real situations uh, we, we don't know uh, the volume and uh, it's certainly not a diffuse sound field. So how can we uh, continue then? Well, the general prediction model um, introduces um, the room attenuation, which I define very simple as the difference between the sound power emitted um, from a person minus the average sound pressure level um, over the area of the pe uh, people uh, uh, dining. So the difference between sound power level and sound pressure level, uh, which in the diffuse uh, field model is this equation. So instead of uh, this 10 log absorption area divided by four, I introduce this room generation, which leads to this equation. So this is a more general equation. And then the trick is that this room generation I can uh, find from a simulation. I do an initial calculation uh, with a surface source with a speech spectrum. I can use the spectrum according to which speech level I would assume to be relevant. Um, and then I can calculate, for instance, just with, with a power of one person. <coughs> and then I get a receiver response or a receiver grid covering the whole area where people are sitting, and I take uh, the 50% percent percentile uh, of the AV to sound pressure level to calculate the transfer function. And um, so it's a way, of, a kind of well, transfer function um, from a surface source to a, a grid of receivers very close together. And then the next step would be to adjust for the actual number of persons um, and, um, yes, and the group size. <clears throat> Here you can see an example in a um, dining room. We have the tables, people sitting here on both sides. Here the red line represents the surface source covering the whole area about the tables and I've chosen here a height of 1.5 meter about the floor and below we have uh, the blue line which represents uh, the grid of receivers. The distance here is just 30 centimeters. Actually I tried in the development uh, many different positions of the uh, surface source and it had absolutely no influence. Well it was marginal. So uh, why not put it in a realistic height? 
and uh, the next slide will show you how this surface source uh, works. It has a large number of randomly distributed uh, source, uh, sources um, being emitted. Um, and, uh, well, here we have a lambda radiation, which means that we have the highest probability of radiation almost perpendicular, but it, it follows the Lambert probability. And um, these, um, well, this is followed then as, as long as we need the impulse response. So here we have an example of a big room with tables here, and here we have actually here divided uh, this uh, source into two um, simultaneously. And we can then uh, account for the number of people, uh, etc. And uh, here we have a lot of view, the two surface sources. Here, the green area is the grid. Uh, well, it is changing a little bit in, in color, but actually the total range of variation of sound pressure level is very limited within uh, a few dB. So we take the 50% average, which is, in this case, 64.6, and uh, since the uh, sound power level applied for this calculation was 82.6, we have the room generation of 16. And th then we can proceed and say how much uh, would be the sound total ambient noise level in this room. And uh, the examples uh, which I first used to test this model uh, were actually three dining rooms um, used simultaneously uh, at uh, the annual event of uh, the University of DTU. And um, in each of them, we had three uh, microphone positions to measure the noise level. And um, reparation time uh, was measured in each part uh, just before um, the event started, but with tables ready the furniture, everything, but you will see very different reparation times. And one of them, this one, a concrete room, very large, first time used for, for dining purpose. Reparation times up to seven seconds, <laughs> low frequency, a really terrible place. Um, and the other rooms with very different reparation times, one of them about half a second. So good examples to show that we can actually uh, cope with these very different rooms. And here are the noise recordings starting uh, 7 o'clock in the evening and very soon the noise level gets up and it remains there for several hours. This is 10 o'clock in the evening and you can see very little change. Actually, I've never, I've not until now been able to find uh, um, any influence uh, of alcohol to increase noise level. It's all often claimed, but there, there's no scientific proof of that. There, there are other <laughs> combinations, but that is another story. Anyway, um, I'll just take one of them to show uh, more precisely um, how it works. Um, this terrible room with the concrete, um, the measured noise levels, the Number of people sitting here, seated here were 480. Reparation time we have already seen, but now we make an Odeon model and adjust materials to match the reparation time. That's important, of course. And then we take for this whole A, um, assuming a certain uh, uh, vocal effort for the surface sources, calculate the grid response, have the room attenuation, and then we assume the number of people here, 480, calculate uh, what we need, and then we end up with 87.7 decibel. This is what we should expect. And we measure for two hours integration during the evening, 87.3, difference less than half a dB. And something similar for the other uh, two places. Uh, differences are less than one decibel. And what about the spectrum? Well, if we had assumed normal speech, measured values are the blue ones 
uh, they don't match too well with the calculated spectrum. But it's not normal speech. Uh, in such a noisy environment, it's not even raised speech, it's loud speech. <laughs> and spectrum matches quite well what we calculate. And uh, then um, it's a question whether we, we could try to have an orientation example. Uh, I'm coming to the end of the time slot I have. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, How long is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be... I can explain uh, what I do at least, and then maybe we could also take it uh, during the demo okay. uh, uh, time, if you like. Um, so, what I've done here is that I have taken two different antiquate recordings. Uh, one is just a male uh, talk, um, short distance. The other one is a lot of people, uh, people at, at, a, uh, at the party, quite noisy, but they don't have the same level. Levels are not adjusted, not even known here. So in uh, this um, column, it's possible to tick uh, a field which is called uh, calibration, uh, which means that before we apply this antiquated recording, the level is automatically adjusted to a certain A-weighted level. So uh, when this is ticked, these two recordings have the same A-weighted level as input signals. This makes things much easier because then uh, here, after the convolution, um, I can adjust for uh, the actual levels calculated uh, with the surface model uh, at the point source in distance of one meter from the listener, I have calculated uh, A-weighted sound pressure levels with the speech spectrum, which uh, has a difference of 13 decibel, and that is included here. So I uh, uh, here adjust for uh, what the actual uh, level difference should be. And then we should have equal level of the two, uh, the two signals. Then we come to the mixing part, and that's over here and on the next slide. And I have moved it here. So here we take different mixings. The first mixing, uh, I should like to try to make it uh, with a very high noise level and with a signal to noise rate of a minus nine, nine decibel. A very difficult situation. Okay, to do that, I take uh, the noise from, uh, from the, all the, the talking people uh, at, well, at zero level. That's the maximum, whereas I attenuate the talking <coughs> person in nine decibels. So I will get the signals and noise rate of minus nine. And uh, then I can do other mixings where I have other levels. Uh, so here in this part, I can simply adjust uh, the level of each component before they go into the, the final mix. And uh, well, I then know from, from my models that if we have, for instance, uh, well, here, something which is the, just on the limit of being a sufficient uh, for the of verbal communication, we should have a uh, signal to noise rate of uh, minus three, and I would expect uh, the noise from, uh, from the, well, the, the uh, ambient noise to be around 71 decibel. And um, I, well, I did the same, um, maybe you noticed in the previous slide, uh, also with uh, pink noise. So uh, if I click on this one, this will give pink noise from the same room model. And this should be adjusted to a level of 80 decibel here in this room. And if we do that, then the rest should be at realistic levels. But um, it will take too much of the time to do it right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I just would uh, conclude now that uh, I have presented a method to, to simulate this quite complicated uh, sound source uh, with unknown sound power, uh, maybe not so well known spectrum, and certainly a very extended uh, size uh, of a source. But it is possible uh, to, to simulate these things and uh, um, well, the, the main uncertainty 
may actually be the social parameter, which I have called the group size, uh, which may depend on uh, which uh, people actually are gathered and for which occasion. <laughs> because there can be some uh, gatherings which are quite sad and quiet, and there can be other very happy gatherings where you have a smaller group size. <laughs> That's maybe where the alcohol comes in. Alcohol will tend to uh, well, reduce the group size. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.